Hi, I'm Tracy Day with Nighthawk Sweepers, and I am uh, pleased to be here with uh, Jimmy Wetlofer, the Vice President of Atlanta Sweeping Service, and Nathan Walton, who is the General Manager of Atlanta Sweeping Service, and they've been kind enough to let us poke our noses around their business here for the last couple days and kind of film some things. And uh, so now we've kind of sit down and kind of ask you a few questions here, and uh, hopefully that you know we can help some of the other sweeping contractors out there. So I guess my first question to you would be, what are some of the key points really in operating a business well? Uh, well, good question, Tracy. We, we've learned over the past 15 years that uh, God's everything that we do. And it's to remember that we're a service business. And uh, the service we provide is cleaning parking lots. Uh, we must exceed our customers' expectations for quality service every day and every night. Um, our goal is to perform error-free every day. And to accomplish these goals, uh, there's four things that we must do. And number one would be take care of our customers, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, take care of our employees. That's important. Uh, number three, take care of our trucks and equipment. Mm -hmm. And number four, watch our cost. Um, if we stay focused in these areas on every day, uh, then we'll be very successful. I think Nathan would agree to that. Yeah, Jimmy, Jimmy is right. Uh, to stay focused is very important. To have the right people, policy, procedures in place, and to operate within the guideline. For example, our, our customers deserve and expect excellent quality of service. Mm -hmm. They deserve uh, excellent communication about the property uh, and immediate problem resolution. The key to our success is communication between our employees, our customers, and that's the key to our success. You know, it sounds so simple, and when you guys say it like that, I mean, it sounds like everybody should be doing this, but, you know, as we've seen across the country, you know, it's, that's a tough thing to do, what you guys are just, you know, what you've described right there. So, I guess, um, kind of going off of that same kind of topic, same points there, what advice would you give to a, both a new startup and an existing uh, sweeping business out there? Yeah, that's easy, Tracy. Um, I would give the advice to both. It would be the same. You know, in addition to the answers um, of how we operate our business well, uh, I'd, have, I'd add a few things that we learned over the years. Everything costs more uh, than you first think, uh, and it takes longer uh, than you think. And uh, it would be smart to include in a business plan uh, three things. First, your initial cost will be twice of what your budget is. Mm -hmm. Number two, uh, your sales will be half of what your budget is. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Number three, uh, you'll experience what we call the dark days here. Uh, you'll work twice as hard as you plan and earn half as much uh, as expected. If you stay focused on these tasks, you, you will be successful. Mm -hmm. Well, I, wouldn't, I wasn't here during the dark days, but I know what Jimmy is saying is true. Uh, uh, treat your customers employees the way you want to be treated. Stay focused. And normally good things will happen when you, when you do it that way. It sounds like there's, I mean, a lot of, uh, you, you've got to stick to it. you got to stick to it. you got to kind of battle it through it. There's no easy plan. There's no easy uh, fix. There's no magic pill for any yeah. of this stuff. So, you know, I know I've known you guys for, you know, going on what it's been 10, 11 years now, yeah. you know, and, and I've seen you guys, you know, work really hard to build the business into what it is today. Yeah. So, you know, um, so I guess one of the other questions I, I would have is kind of like when you first started, maybe tell a little bit how you, how you started. Uh, you know, maybe since 95 when Bill came on board, maybe you can tell a little bit about uh, uh, oh. what you guys were doing from, from that point on. Those are the dark days. Those are the dark days, okay. <laughs> Those are the learning days. When, uh, when Bill came aboard, we, uh, uh, we, we started, we had six trucks. Uh, we've progressed to what we have now. We, we currently have 23 trucks. We run 19 mm -hmm. every night. Uh, the other trucks are used for growth. Uh, they're also used for the unexpected. Uh, in that time period, uh, Bill and I learned a lot of things together. Um, I was here uh, previously to that for uh, maybe a year and a half, and there wasn't a lot uh, that um, I learned in that time period. Most of the stuff Bill and I learned together, and every all the policies, procedures, everything we placed is is either made from a mistake or an error. Which, as you as I mentioned earlier, we want to be error free, and we came up with a policy and procedure. In that time frame, we had to find. Uh, very reliable employees, and we did. We, we, it took quite some time to do that. In 98, we switched over our fleet to um, uh, hydraulic units, all from Nighthawk, 
and uh, it has lowered the cost uh, and has made our business very successful, I think. You know, I kind of going through it, you know, we're, we're from Nighthawk and, and, you know, hopefully that, you know, we play a part and hopefully your success also. So can you maybe explain a little bit about what the advantages are in running our hydraulic equipment? I know maybe maybe from Nate's point of view first and then Jimmy, I know on the mechanic side, you, you, know, you know him, you know, as well as anybody, John, and you probably better than anybody in the country, but maybe from, you know, from an operation standpoint like Nate, I mean, what are some of the advantages that you see? The advantage I have and, and what I do for a service as a truck is make sure they stay clean and make sure that the inside and the outside stay clean and the truck's presentable every night when they go out to project a perfectly run company. Uh, but I would let Jimmy tell you more about the service. He would know more about that than, than I can tell you. Okay. I like some of the advantages, Jimmy. Advantages, um, fuel savings. Um, the maintenance and inventory that we have to uh, keep in stock, obviously. Um, tire wear is, is phenomenal. Um, we use the Ford chassis for a specific reason. Uh, we tried Chevys at one time and we switched over to Ford but to be, because Ford offers a, a, a good fleet program. And since we have as many units as we have, uh, Ford incentivizes us for that. They're heavier duty. Um, trucks. They're also uh, low emissions vehicles. That's why we have to use them. Uh, in, in, in our state here, they require that. Um, the it's just really the maintenance, the maintenance, the efficiency of the of, of the units. Uh, they sweep excellent. Uh, they pick up everything that we were sweeping before we 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 got with you in 1998. Same parking lots. Um, they're easier to operate. Mm -hmm. Just um, very, very efficient vehicles. That's that's why we went to them. Uh, they're also good in noise uh, noise ordinance uh, situations, and and that's, they're very quiet. Um, when we're in the parking garages that we sweep, that are usually downtown uh, in, in a very populated area, uh, the noise ordinance is very strict here in, in Atlanta, and we hardly ever get any complaints from using those uh, that type of equipment in that area. And then we just like them. You know, I know when we originally started talking to you way back then, I know that inventory was a big issue. I mean, there was, and, and obviously when you have more complicated things going on, you're going to have a bigger inventory. Can you talk a little bit about, I'm not sure who handles inventory, is that, is that Jimmy? Do. So can you talk a little bit about kind of what your inventory has gone from to what it is today with, you know, I guess from six trucks even, all the way up to, you know, what you're currently operating right now? Mm -hmm. um, with the other units that we used to have, we, we kept filters, uh, a lot of filters. We had pre-filters and everything else for to, to run the rear engine. Um, at the time, the comparison, I guess, we used the cab overs. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you know, 12 quarts of oil and and uh, 7 quarts of oil in the rear, and you had pre-filters in the front as well. They were diesel. Um, there was just a lot more items that were needed to keep those trucks running. Um, these units that we use, the chassis we use, I know it doesn't have anything to do with the sweeper, but I mean, I can go a whole year without uh, doing a brake job on a truck. Mm -hmm. uh, couldn't do that on the cab overs, and that's what I compare it to. Our inventory that we had based before was based on cab overs. Obviously, you need more inventory for that, but I think most of it was for the, uh, you know, the rear engine units. I had a lot of parts in stock for, to keep the rear engine running. Uh, radiator parts all the way to uh, starters from England. I mean, we had to have specialty items that I had to keep on the shelf to keep the trucks rolling. So we talked a little bit about kind of, uh, you know, your roles. I mean, you obviously have pretty distinct roles here, you know, last week. I, I think that's what, you know, at least from the outside point of view, I think that's what makes you guys successful. I mean, they're very defined. And, and so, you know, maybe Nathan, you can talk a little bit about kind of what your role is and, and you know, some of your duties and, and, and what you do there. Uh, as, as a general manager, my role is, is, is number one is, is to take care of my customers. Number two is to take care of my employees, and and number three is to ensure the the proper proper bill, proper ah, just keep going. Ensure that that the company is is going in the right direction here. And, and what I mean by that is, is is making sure that what I tell my customers is exactly what we're doing at night. My employees, I value those guys a lot because they have certainly made this company what it is today. Uh, 
this is by the, the longevity, the ones that's been here a while that, that knows a lot about what they're doing and, and understand the complaint of the customers and know how to go out and deal with it. My objective is to make these guys see and understand exactly what a property manager see from their perspective in order to get things right when they go out and, and handle those. And just just these guys, I have to make sure that they they can trust what they tell me. And, and, and that's that's why I value their opinion so much whenever whenever they talk to me. Yep. Well, just a kind of a follow-up question on the employees before I get to Jimmy, kind of on your roles and everything, on your employees. What's the, what's kind of the, the length of service to some of you guys? I mean, because I've been out here and I recognize a lot of the same guys over the last 10 years. I mean, what's, uh, it seems like a lot have been around here for quite a while. Well, well, they have been here a while. I, I've been here only about three years. So, so, so you're, you're a newbie. I, I'm, I'm a newbie. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm the new trash man on the block. But uh, the thing is, is uh, these guys, I think, from, from what I'm seeing, is some have been around here eight, nine, and I think we have one that's been here probably about as long as Jimmy have. Yeah, there's, you know. there varies from three to 15 years to be exact. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, and our supervisors came from within there as well. So he, he can tell you, Jimmy can tell you a lot more about how long they've been here. I can look at, a, at the data and tell them how long they've been here. But these guys, that I can tell about what they do, the job, and the job they perform, they've been here. So, so Jimmy? Tell us a little about, you know, I guess maybe you can tell us a little bit more about employees that have been here for... Um, the, the employees that have been here, like Nathan said, they've been here for a long time. Um, and our supervisors and team leaders were always promoted from within. Um, we value their longevity here as, as, as a long-term employee. We really do. Um, the crew that we have is an excellent crew. Uh, we treat them with respect. Uh, but we, we have very strict guidelines on what is expected from them. And uh, they've, they've accepted those terms, and they do a really, a, a very well job, a uh, very good job. They, uh, they they communicate very well with Nathan. Uh, we communicate with them as well in quarterly meetings. Uh, Bill actually comes out there, and we sit down and we explain everything to him, where we stand, what we expect from him. Uh, they they understand it. Um, I, I think they actually like to work here. Uh, their their focus as soon as they walk in the gate. They know what is expected. They know what to do. They know how to get the job done. They've been they've been trained properly, especially the ones that have been here for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, and those are pretty much the ones they've been promoted from uh, within up to a supervisor or a team leader's position, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nathan uh, has a very good relationship with them as well. Uh, he knows how to uh, sit down and and talk to them. And, and quite frankly, this board in this room here, uh, a lot of the way that it's pieced together is from. Uh, information that they've given back to us about how the routes need to be run. They play a big part in our, in our company. You know, I think that's that's one of the things that's really, frankly, is, is unique about, you know, Atlanta Sweeping Services. I know there's a lot of, we talk to tons of companies all over the country, and, you know, you don't see that where, you know, where you got guys that are out there for 15 years, and not just, you know, one or two. You may see 10% of their employees have been there, but a lot of your guys, I mean, most of your guys have been there for, been here for quite a while, and I'm talking, you know, I mean, three years is kind of a relatively short-term employee for you guys, and I think that speaks really, uh, you know, highly of how you treat your employees and, you know, the compensation schedule and, and program that you guys have put in place. And, and I think that, you know, at least from the outside point of view, when I look at, uh, you know, giving advice or talking to them, you know, say, you got to treat your employees well, and you can see that with with, with They're with the best at what they yeah. do. They yeah. know exactly what they're doing. Yeah. They, they're very good at their job. Yep. Yeah. I, think, I think it's the term of respect, too. That we, we show them a lot of respect mm -hmm. as men, and we don't treat them like kids. They are adults, and that's that's what we consider them, adults. Mm -hmm. And the expectation that, like I said, Jimmy said, we, we set for them, we expect them to meet those expectations or to exceed those expectations. So those guys, they know what the playing field is. They they know what the game plan is, and, and they go out and they know how to execute it. And, and that's, what, that's, what, that's, that's why I'm so proud of these guys. Well, it seems to, I mean, in addition to that, you're giving them these goals and these benchmarks, but you're also giving them tools to do that, too, which I think yeah. is important. Yeah. I mean, you know, so many times you can set out a goal or something way out there, and if you don't give them the right tools, then people get frustrated. You can see with your employees, they're not frustrated, you know, that they're able to hit these goals and benchmarks and, and you know, and, and have a, you know, and feel that level of success that, you know, that you guys feel, too. So well, We always told them we'd never give them anything that we wouldn't do ourselves. Mm -hmm. But you, you contribute a lot of it to, to Jimmy, too, to Nighthawk. Jimmy maintains the truck, 
<laughs> you give us a good drop. These guys know every night when they come in and sit in, and especially some of the other guys that's the driven of the trucks, they know when they come in and they get into these trucks, they know they're going to go the whole night. Mm -hmm. There's no breakdown. There's, the breakdowns are not there. They, they go out and they know they're going to return and they return on time. Well, do you, kind of switching gears here, maybe a little bit here, and talk a little bit about kind of some of the financial controls that you guys have in place. You know, I know you guys are really, you know, you, you talked a little bit earlier about, you know, margins and budgets, and, and maybe you can kind of speak to that a little bit about kind of how you set up making sure that you do control your costs. Um, you know, what are some of the things that you guys have in place? We watch everything, Nathan and I do. It's a, it's a lot of the um, finance part, I guess, or not finance part, I should say, that the... Um, the budget was created from from Bill, and Bill, that's we're no different than the drivers. He gives us a budget to go by, and we have to meet those. There's no questions about it. We have to meet it, and that's where we work really well together on doing that. And we pass it along to the uh, to the drivers as well, and they understand that we, we we watch our fuel cost. We watch everything that we buy here. If we don't need it, we don't buy it. If we don't think we need it, we don't buy it most of the time. Um, a funny example would be that I needed a, a specific kind of welder and a cutting tool for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I've just been putting it off forever and ever and ever. And, and, and I had a situation where there was a truck that I, I had to get fixed and, and it required that, that tool. And I could have found another craftier way to do it probably. But uh, uh, because we do watch our costs, you know, this is where the, it's like the drivers, you know, they get rewarded. Bill said, you know, you've needed that for five years now. Go buy it. Mm -hmm. We're okay. And if we didn't watch our costs in those areas, that would never happen. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a big demand from Bill put on me and Nathan to make sure that we watch these costs very closely. And, uh, he takes care of a lot of the invoicing and um, for the extra pickups. Mm -hmm. and, and I make sure that all the customers get their invoices for monthly. And that's and, and we both work together on, on loading and changing customers and changing around invoices. Um, Bill takes in all the receivables and watches the money, that's his job. And uh, we have meetings every day, as we have meetings with the drivers every day. And we go over some of those areas, and that's what the quarterly meetings are with the drivers. It's financials. Bill sits out there with us and we go over financials and we explain to him where we're staying. And as he, he watches the, the inventory for his, his, his supplies in the tool room out there, the uh, parts and everything, as I watch it. The, the cost for the office supplies, you know, mm -hmm. it, it, too much, too much on the shelf is money being left on the shelf. I mean, it, it shouldn't be there. It should be where it should be. Is where Bill can see it. I mean, money on the shelf and there's just, it's a waste there. So let's let's keep it here and then when I need it, I'll go get it. Good example. I do inventory with you guys kind of like annually. Mm -hmm. You know, I order a lot at one time. But I try to do that whenever we're getting a new truck. Mm -hmm. Saves the freight. You guys are bringing the truck anyway. Load the hopper up with parts. That's just smart. Mm -hmm. Trucks come in here. Bring the parts when you come. Mm -hmm. Well, so I think too. I think you know one of the things I notice is, is when you guys go through and you do a budget. It's like you said. You have meetings every day. You have you have you know you come back. You can see where you're at. You don't wait till the end of the year and go. Oops! Look at all the stuff we've been throwing away all year long. It's called leakage. We don't yeah. believe in that. Anymore. I mean, if you if you see something right then, you're fixing it. And 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 I think that's a lot of times what sweeping companies miss. You know, they if the ones that are doing budget, they're they go through their entire year and then they say, hey, did I hit my budget or not? Instead of looking at it quickly to see, hey, whoops, we're off. We better fix something right now and make those adjustments quick. And I think you know, for you guys, that's what I've noticed too. Is not only you have that tool in place, but you're using that tool effectively to, to, to implement any new programs or anything that you we know. Watch it daily. Yeah. And it's very important that we use it that way. Yep. It's, a, it's very important. Mm -hmm. So, so kind of maybe talking about a little bit more macro here, you know, your, your guys' view of the industry out there, the sweeping industry. What are some of the things that you guys see as some of the biggest threats out there to the sweeping industry? Um, you know, some of the things that, you know, What's going to come down and you know and hurt you guys maybe here locally but also maybe nationally? What do, what do you guys see? I, I I think it's it's people not understanding the business, mm -hmm. pricing wise, um, not understanding the end results. Once I mean I, I think anytime you put a plan together, you have to have the end result in mind. You can't just start out on an endeavor and not know what's what's going what the final result will be. 
Mm -hmm. uh, I think Bill, he was very good at doing that when he started. Like I said, during the dark days, they started out. They put together this plan. I'm pretty sure he had a, a, a end result in mind, and I think we're reaching that goal. I th but I think we never stopped building. Mm -hmm. And, and with, I guess I came in on the tail end of it, so I think they did the hard part. And he can probably tell you more about the harder part of getting yeah. to that position. Well, it's the dark days. You worked real hard, and to keep your per sweep rates at a certain level, and you would think that most everyone would want to play in that same field, and they don't for whatever reasons. I guess they have to make payroll or whatever. But this is a real touchy subject with me. But we worked real hard to keep our sweep rate at a certain rate, mm -hmm. and. There are a lot of people out there that want to undercut these prices and they bring them down so low it's just it's to a point where it's lower than what an employee would make our driver would make per hour. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. It's it's kind of a real touchy subject with me because I just don't think that that's right. I don't think it's fair. And we work real hard uh, to get things where we're at, but it seems to me that some of these people drag you down and they take you back the other way and we just don't accept that. I think it's hard to once you get down that once that market actually starts to go down, you know, and it's hard to bring it back up, you know. And it's it's I mean it takes years and years, and so I mean we see that across the country too that, you know, that you gotta you gotta teach people about their costs, you gotta teach people budget, and you gotta teach people what they really make because I think so many people don't know, mm -hmm. and so uh, you know and, and we do see areas that you know have been kind of knocked down, knocked down, and it takes years and years to get those you know even moderately back up, let alone really where really they should be. You know, from the levels to actually, you know, to you know, to earn what you really are out there, uh, you know, really what you, what you should be making out there. So, um, so how do you guys? And again, we talk a little bit about more custom kind of operational stuff. New accounts. Um, how do you actually go out there and, and get new accounts? I mean, there's I know I know Bill's here, and you know you're in your Jimmy and Nathan, but you know people ask us questions like that all the time. How do you get new? How, how do people get new accounts out there? Well. Quality, uh, communication, uh, giving the customers what they need is, is, is basically advertising enough. It's word of mouth. Uh, like I said, you can, you can set an expectation and not meet it with, through advertising, but through word of mouth, like I said, word of mouth is probably the, the cheapest way of, of, of advertising because you're hearing the truth from people. And, and when I get proposals and people want to have some kind of reference about Atlanta Sweeping Services, what I do is I give them four, five, six names of people that they can call. And you know, these people are telling them what kind of service they've gotten from us. So basically what that does is it passes that on to other people and, and that sends the other customers our way here what they did in the past to past three years before I got here. I don't know how they did it or if that's what they did, but that's what I see that's going on now and, and it's working because every day you know, I'm getting emails, I'm getting phone calls of, of people saying, hey, look, I've, I've got this reference here to give you guys a call to see if you can give me a quote on, on sweeping your parking lot, sweeping our parking lot. Mm -hmm. So most of, it's, most of yours is just doing a good job. I mean, yeah, it, all, it all stems from, you know, your basic foundation, your basic philosophies that we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. From there, I mean, that allows you to, you know, continue growing. It's quality, word of mouth. Um, you know, we, we do a great job in the customers that we currently have, and a lot of the customers that we have had in the past was, was from acquisitions that we have gotten from, uh, I think Bill's bought several companies, um, other sweeping companies that were in that uh, mind frame of uh, let's just sweep it for nothing and and try to uh, discourage you know try to ruin the market by bringing the prices way down. Well, they don't last very long, so th th they came to him and they and we bought those companies, and um, that that increases your customer base and it's just uh, it's like a network it just continues getting larger. Mm -hmm. and, and and you have some customers that, that they they pick the mom and pop that that gives them the lower price, but only you pay for what you get. And once they get it and they find out this is not what they want, you see a lot of those people yeah. come right back around and, and we got them again and we go back to work for them and we don't divert any way from what we do now. It's the same service, we give them the same service and we try to improve every day. I'm trying to think of anything and everything I can do to improve 
and, and with my guys on what we can do here to make things better than what we got them right now. I mean, one of the tools it seems like too, I mean, to, to provide that customer service is, is making sure that you know where your guys are at, what they're doing, all that. Are good. And I know one of the tools you guys use are, is, is GPS. Mm -hmm. and, and so, why don't you tell a little bit about what your system? I know there's all kinds of different systems out there, and there's all kinds of different debates all the time about which is better. What, 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 what do you guys use? We bought it, what, four years ago, maybe, I guess. And, um, you know, at that time, it was the most advanced. GPS system I can't, that, that they had at the time. Um, there is a lot of features on there that um, we tried to use and, and, and manipulate, but we found out you don't really need all that. We found out that what Nathan does is he pulls up a report and I let him get into that every day on tracking their, um, uh, their speed, mm -hmm. including the parking lot sweeping speed, which you know, that makes a difference. If you've got a gust we've been parking like 30 miles an hour, it's not going to be clean when you get done with it. Mm -hmm. um, that helps. Uh, Google has also helped with a lot of uh, uh, the way that they've set up their mapping to where we can overlay it. We can, we can actually see uh, how they've swept and overlay mm -hmm. it on the Google map of a shopping center that we sweep and you can actually see what they've swept. If a customer were to say that they didn't think someone went into the rear of the shopping center, we would be able to overlay that on a map and see that. Mm -hmm. So there's two useful things there. Uh, if a customer were to call and say that they don't think that we were there or we didn't do a very good job, we can actually send them all that information so they can review it themselves. Um, those are the areas that we look at every day that help us, but it, it'll do a lot more. But I don't think we need the other uh, tools that it offers us to use, and, and he uses it every day, so he, know more, he knows more about how uh, it helps him in a daily practice. Yeah, it. it, it. Normally, just like uh, Jimmy was saying, I mean, and he's right about what, what we do with GPS, it, it offers a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it will give you a lot, but there's, I think there's only certain areas on there you can use to find out where the guy's at. Mm -hmm. You can tell which way he's going on the parking lot. You can tell if his, his downtime, his speed time, his idle time. You can look at all of that. Uh, the one thing that I look at the most when I first start out is I look at the, the travel report. Mm -hmm. I look at the uh, daily speed report. Mm -hmm. And if there's, like Jimmy said, if there's a customer complaint, I can go in there and get more detail with that property and go exactly to that property. Mm -hmm. Pull it up with the tracking system, which has colored lines or red lines that mark from the time they leave this building here mm -hmm. and, and every stop. And, and I can pull that particular property up, put it on email, and send it to that customer and let them see that we were there. Uh, if any, any, any other kind of irregularity is there, then that's when I get on the phone and I talk with them and, and we, we try to straighten the situation out. And, and nine times out of ten, I resolve the situation with that. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the next conversation is with the driver to, to go back out and make sure we get it right. We're going to do whatever it takes to make sure it, the property is clean out there. Well, I was going to ask, like, the, and the final question I was going to ask you guys, you know, what makes you successful? But this is kind of everything that we just talked about. I mean, you, you do what you say you're going to do when you say you're going to do it. You treat your people well. You know, you treat your people fairly. And, you know, you're, you're diligent. You have policies and procedures in place. And, and all those things, you know, together kind of, you know, uh, lend to your success. So I really do. I really appreciate you guys letting us come in here and kind of, again, like, poke our nose around here and, you know, and, and see what you do. And I and uh, so, um, is there anything that you guys would like to add, or anything uh, to uh, uh, right now on, on anything that we've we've talked about so far? It's it's, it's this is a good company. It's it's something I'm proud to be a part of. I've I've been with other companies, but this is one that I, I will know I will be with for a long time because I enjoy what I'm doing here. Mm -hmm. It's 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 what I want to do, and that's that's what I'll be at. Be right here. I mean, You'd have to break both my legs, get me away from here, and you'd have to drag me in. <laughs> I think our employees are, feel the same way. Actually, I think they enjoy coming to work, believe it or not. I don't, yeah. I don't know too many companies are that way. And, and, and what we do here. Nighthawks like that. Right? Nighthawks, okay. Yeah. Good. <laughs> but we actually in, in, you know, enjoy coming to work. Yeah, and, and we, made to a couple of, we made comments of he and, 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 and all that stuff. We just wanted to make sure that we recognize Tammy. Tammy, yeah. He and guys. We have a we have a young lady that works here. Does a very good job. I mean, you do. You you look forward to getting up in the morning. And and I think I know. I done told Bill this before, and I done told you. I you look forward to getting up, coming to work in the morning. You, you get up and you get in. And you do.
Mm-hmm. That that's me. I, that's how I feel. I look forward to coming to work every day because I, I I enjoy that much of what I do. Again, appreciate you letting us come here and poke okay. around out here. Thank you. And appreciate also letting me film it. Okay. And uh, and we'll uh, talk to you later. Thanks.